how to identify the former Soviet, now Russian, 2S4, 240mm self-propelled mortar system. But before we get onto the identification features of this vehicle, let's look at these specifications. Weight, 30 tons or 27,200 pounds. Length, 8.5 meters or 27 feet, 11 inches. Width, 3.2 meters or 10 feet, 6 inches. Height, 3.2 meters or 10 feet, 6 inches. And this vehicle has a crew of 5. Range, 420 kilometers or 260 miles. Speed, 62 kilometers an hour or 40 miles per hour. Okay then, let's go ahead and look at the identification features of the 2S4 Tyolpin mortar system. And now let's look at the identification features of the 2S4. Starting at the vehicle front, there's a slight angle upwards. It then steps up, flattens to an almost vertical angle up, then a long shallow slope until it flattens, then to a slight step up where it flattens to the rear of the vehicle. At the rear, it angles and drops to just above the rear idler. Now that's the last wheel at the top of the track. And here, of course, we're looking at the vehicle from the front side. So if you follow those yellow lines there, you'll kind of see what I mean. From the left side of the vehicle, the tank slopes up to the commander's position. The commander's position appears to angle forward slightly from this angle. In reality, it does not. It is then flat on top. At the rear of the commander's position, it drops to the deck and flattens out to the rear where it angles and drops to just above the rear idler. And once again, you can see that there if you follow those yellow lines. In this video clip here, pay a particular attention to the sides of the vehicle. Now here we'll see mainly the left side as the vehicle goes past. We'll see it. We can't see the exhaust on the left side of the vehicle. And now let's look at the rear quarter of the sides of the vehicle. The rear sides angled inwards on both sides. So you can see here the right side with the yellow lines. Notice how the vertical region of the hull stops before the angled rear. And you can see that there if you follow those red lines. And here again on the left side, from the rear, notice how the sides of the hull slope upwards. You can see that if you follow the yellow lines. Also noticeable here is a reverse triangle, with the red lines from the vertical side of the hull. Now in the next video clip, it's going to, to be a little hard to make out, but see there, if you look carefully, you'll be able to see the rear of the vehicle, the rear sides of the vehicle, and, and how it angles in at the rear. It's only a short clip, but if you look carefully and pause it, you'll, you should be able to see it. You should be able to make out those sides angling in, are highlighted briefly in orange there. And looking at this vehicle here, which I've highlighted in very bright colors, the lower glacier's plate, which is in dark green, is ribbed and almost vertical. The upper glacier's plate, which I've highlighted in light green, slopes up to a flat deck. The engine compartment is in blue. It is on the right side. It slopes up from the upper glacier's plate. Note the triangular box type area on the right of the compartment in blue. On the left side, the cutout for the headlight is in purple. It has a flat back and an angled side, which makes it part of the sloped upper glacier's plate. The front of the hull containing the commander's hatch or position is also in purple and appears sloped on either side with a flat top. Notice here the, that the commander's position has multiple angled sides. It is difficult to see accurately in this picture, unfortunately. However, I've tried to highlight it there. With the, I've tried to show the different sides there with those yellow and red lines. So the front line, the front of the commander's position is highlighted with those red lines and the angled sides. I've tried to show that with those yellow lines. In this video, pay attention to the lower glacier's plate, which is ribbed, and also the commander's position. Look at those angled sides. You can see that with the green arrow. And once again, from the rear, notice how the sides of the hull slope upwards. You can see that there if you follow those yellow lines. Also noticeable is the reverse triangle, which is in the red lines, from the vertical side of the hull. And here, where you can also see that the mortar base plate has eight sides, so you can see that there if you follow those eight orange lines around the base plate of the mortar. 
So the 2S4 has a box-like rectangular exhaust near the front of the hull. It is located on the left side of the vehicle just above the first road wheel. You can see it there in that yellow outline, in that yellow rectangle. And there we can see the, the exhaust with all the smoke coming out when these vehicles are first started, obviously in the cold. And of course we can also see the exhaust here in the vehicle too. And when travelling the mortar tube lies along the middle centre length of the vehicle. You can see the tube there in that yellow oval. And here we can see the mortar tube being lowered to the ground when the system is being prepared for firing. And once again you can see those tubes there, or this tube here, in that yellow oval. And another photo of the 2S4 with a mortar tube in the firing position. Notice the mortar platform is connected to the vehicle. And this vehicle has a drive sprocket at the front, and we, you can see that in that yellow circle there. We have six sets of road wheels, and those road wheels I have in those red circles. We also have an idle at the rear, and I've put that in the blue circle, and we have four return rollers, and I've put those in grey. And you can see all of those there in this photo. Developed during the Cold War, the 2S4 Tyolpin 240mm self-propelled mortar system entered service in 1972. I believe Tyolpin is Russian for Tulip. However, the vehicle was not officially seen in the West until the mid-1970s, where it was designated M-1975 by NATO. The mortar itself is somewhat unusual in that rounds are loaded from the breech, rather than the muzzle as on smaller mortars such as the 81mm and 82mm mortars. The vehicle can carry up to 40 mortar rounds or 20 rocket assisted rounds. Regular rounds have a range of approximately 9.5 kilometers, while the RAP or rocket assisted projectiles can push up that range to around 20 kilometers. However, due to the size of the projectiles, the sustained rate of fire is only about one per minute. When it entered service, the 2S4 was, or was designed to fire high explosive, armor piercing, chemical, and nuclear rounds. A laser guided round is also available. The Tolpin is powered by a V59 V12 diesel engine producing over 500 horsepower. The engine is at the front of the hull with a crew compartment and base at the, and the that is the mortar base at the rear of the vehicle. Of course the mortar tube as we've seen in those photos is where the vehicle is traveling that it lies along the center of the vehicle with the base, the, the rear of the mortar, that is the base plate hanging over the rear of the vehicle. The system is capable of operating an MBC, that is nuclear, biological and chemical environments, and small arms may be fitted. Night vision devices may also be added if needed. Tolpin has seen combat service in Afghanistan and Chechnya, and unconfirmed reports place it in contested areas of the Ukraine and Syria. While somewhere between 400 to 600 of these systems rolled off production lines, today only around two dozen are in service with Russia and perhaps a handful are in use with the Syrian army.